Hello everybody, welcome to your favorite FIFA Ultimate Team Trading Podcast. I'm here with Jake, our trading expert, and Jake will tell us now what happened with the market this week. Oh man, that there's a lot. This could take a long time, Florian. Um, <laughs> let's no, let's split it into three episodes. <laughs> I, no, I just we're just joking. But guys, the market's been absolutely crazy this week. As someone who's an experienced trader who's traded on FIFA for years, this has honestly been the craziest first few weeks to a FIFA market I've ever seen. Um, essentially what you've seen is a lot of gold fluctuating in price massively and I'm talking like 20 to 30 percent swings pretty often you see cards crashing that are out of packs which usually doesn't happen you've seen ones to watches rising and falling quickly with games and performances um, so the market's been absolutely crazy a lot of people have lost coins a lot of coins were made specifically today which is Thursday because the market has finally started to rebound but um, literally from like Sunday to Wednesday, the market was downtrending like five market points every every few days. And it was just dropping and dropping and dropping because there is more supply every single day than there was buyers. And a big issue for this, guys, is that with the weekend league and rivals stipulations, basically people are going to have to choose one or the other to play or just play rivals on Thursday. And that means that Monday to Wednesday are really dead days on FIFA for a lot of players. So they're not going to be looking to upgrade their team. They're not going to be playing the game too much. So every time there's supply on those days, there's not going to be a whole lot of buying going on. So every single day there was supply coming on and not a lot of buyers and carts just got crushed in price. And today with rewards, when everyone got their rivals and weekend league rewards, you saw the market absolutely fly. Uh, Some examples here include Martial. He was up around 40, 40K, Allen's up 20K, Mendy's up 30K, Pogba 30K, Lucas 20K. One one question here, one mm-hmm. question here, Jake. Are they up f- from the prices from yesterday or are they up compared to Sunday? Yesterday, and they would still, I think a lot of these would be up slightly from Sunday itself. Gomez is pretty similar. Mendy's is higher than I've seen in a while. Um, so, so let's say if... People didn't sell their teams on on Sunday. They would be okay today. Yeah, it would probably be pretty darn similar. And it just shows that it's going to be a weekly pattern and that Thursdays are going to be great days for selling. And it usually stays within Friday as well. Um, And as you know, this Friday, we I mean, tomorrow, we have a new promotion called Rule Breakers. And there's very little known about it. But um, depending how the promo is and what cards feature, the market could also have some big movement then too. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Jake. I want to go back a little bit to our last podcast where, uh, as you know, I told you what I will do, what I did with my investments. And I want to continue because I want to make it very, very transparent to Mm -hmm. our audience. So during last podcast, I was buying uh, Rodrigo's gold card because he was announced in uh, in wants to watch team 2 mm-hmm. and i said okay he's a good investment he's one of the most popular players spanish yep. links well premier league with la liga so on his price then was around 35k yeah and uh, let's say the day have passed uh, the day have passed at some point he he went up a little bit maybe he went yep. up to 37 38k yep at that some point, man, I don't know what happened, but he went slippery slopes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at at thirty three, thirty four, yeah, I managed to sell like I had thirty of them. Okay. I managed to sell like twenty. Yeah. And the rest ten, the rest of ten, I sold at thirty k. Mm-hmm. So I took I took a, a loss there. Uh, but, but it's smaller to, than it could have been. <laughs> it's it's I I didn't think so. This morning, I think I checked his price. And I, I believe he was on PlayStation. He was like 12K if I'm, uh, if I'm uh, right. And when I saw that, man, it, I, I almost... Whoa, he got, so he, he, he got down as low as 9 or 10. Yeah, that's whoa, crazy. So, so that, was, that was really crazy. Especially for a card who's out of packs, right? Or he... he he's, in, he's, still, he's in now. Uh, but so he, he now doesn't have yes, a ton but, of supply. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. yeah, th- that was that was my moves. Unfortunately, during the weekend, I didn't. So the move during the weekend was to uh, watch the games and buy. As we discussed, you know, yep. we advised the people to if you watch the game, buy fast some players who score and so on. Yep. So Werner scored uh, two goals and had an assist, even if they if they made a draw. 
he was a very good buy. He was quite expensive because he was almost 600-700k the ones to watch. Yeah, and expensive. there were similar cards who, from ones to watch promo who had, I, I think you even tweeted about it that, hey, almost every ones to watch is, is doing yeah. great and so on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, guys, Aussie man, Florenzi had a goal. I mean, they're both in team of the week, so they both perform. Havertz had a goal. Werner had a goal. Um, yeah, I even think there was more, but those are the ones I can name off the top of my head. And um, it's, it was crazy trading with them. And the, it was crazy trading them when they did get team of the week too. I guess I can cover that really, really briefly, what happens is we've talked yeah. about it in another yeah. podcast. But this Florenzi, guys, this one, this situation was absolutely crazy, actually. So this Florenzi is a really nice card. He's a really niche player, though. So he is... He's Italian, and not many people are going to use Italian back lines. And then he's League One, but again, not many people I don't think are looking to use League One back lines. There's just not that many. Maybe he links with Koscielny if you're looking to use him. But yeah, other than that, really, I don't see many people rocking them. So he was a great card. His face stats are really good getting towards Hullet game. But um, essentially, it was leaked that he got Team of the Week, and it was known that he was going to get Team of the Week. And it was to the extent that EA put his in-game stats, all these guys were boosted early, like the night before. So that caused an absolute craze of um, panic buying. And a couple of days ago, let's see if I pull, can pull it up here. A couple of days ago, he went to literally in the middle of the night, like 37K. And I had quite a bit around this mark, around 21, 22, 23. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I, I tried to get out of them at 35 to 37K, and I missed a few, but I still sold at 31. And that was a crazy circumstance because EA messed up and confirmed that he was, in fact, getting an inform. So it caused like a mass buying period, and it was a great time to sell into. Um a question here, Jake. Yeah. Uh, why did you have him? Like, why did you buy him? I thought he had a decent shot at Team of the Week. Um, Mbappe okay. had a couple goals in their game. And mm-hmm. for their EA to put in Mbappe or Messi or Cristiano, they usually have to have, like, just an outstanding performance. And I'm talking, like, three-plus goals because that happens mm-hmm. so much for them often throughout the year that they have to work a little harder for informs, which I think is actually good, else you'd see them a lot. Um, and then it came down and, to and, and sur- a short uh, a short comment here. And, yeah. uh, uh, just ho- hold your idea for a second. Yeah. I I noticed this year. Do, don't you think like EA is giving team of the week spots to wants to watch easily this year compared Correct. to last year? Correct. Yeah. Okay. I was just going to say that I think because it was the current promotion too, like that was the main focus for them, that they slipped in these cars. Um, Aussie men guys also um, was debatably going to be in with Lozano had a couple goals think, yeah so Lozano had two goals and Aussie man had had only one so. yeah I think Aussie man did get man of the match but that one came down to the fact that it was unlikely they were going to give a second in form this early I mean we've only had four yeah what well, would be four team of the weeks so that two and four weeks is quite high so yeah. if you use the knowledge of FIFA along with that, that's when you could have picked them up. And for Florenzi was like kind of a toss up with Sarabia, but again, it, like you said, Florian, it does seem like they're pushing the ones to watches a little bit. So yeah, I think that's why they put him in. And he's a nice car. It was good for them to hype him up, but it was just a crazy circumstance. So he actually um, came down in price quite a bit, and that's also because the inform is so low, right? Because he's going to be priced a lot off this inform, guys, where you should be valued. A good chunk over the inform because he's a live card and can go up more. But his inform right now is only 13k on PS, so there's no way that Florenzi can be like a 40k card unless this would start rising too. This is really cheap. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I'm not playing a, a League One team. <laughs> not many but are. He, he would be very good to play him as yeah. a center center mid, not really a, like a defender. But even as a defender, he has very nice pace. Mm-hmm. Uh, some some people would say he's very good to play as a cam <laughs> yeah well he's got four star skills this year i don't think he had that yeah. last year so that's pretty cool um but i mean yeah guys if you want a fun little super sub that you're really gonna lose no coins on because he's pretty much at an spc fodder price go ahead try him out because that's you can play him nearly anywhere as a super sub yeah yeah clearly and uh, my que- my question is, uh, Jake here. Mm-hmm. For, so for for this week, what did you do 
what did, like what did you invest so you saw so okay well the weekend ended mm-hmm. what were your moves like this week where did you go so you said about florenzi you had like a, um an idea that maybe he will get in because mbappe wasn't like uh, uh, didn't have like a hat trick what else did uh, did you managed to do this week so that was my big move i had like 150 plus of him so that really? was yeah you, you had a you yeah. had a hundred florenzis yeah i had a lot of florenzi <laughs> so that was a really really good profit but i man needed... so you went you went almost all in right yeah well kind of i mean that's only like what was it would have been three or four million yeah 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 so that worked really well i was really really happy with it um, but I also lost some coins this week, guys, and I think that it's really important for good traders and traders in general to share their losses. I know I, I've said it on Twitter, too, but it's just been a really hard market this year, and I don't make every call right. I get a lot more right than wrong. But uh, Like, missed... like where, where, did you, where did you lose uh, the most coins, let's say? Uh, there's a couple of easy examples. So, guys, I invested in Werner. I invested in his gold card on Wednesday morning, okay, because... Team of the week was pretty much confirmed. They got leaked out really early, and he was going to get team of the week, and his gold card wasn't really up in price. And this gold card, guys, it doesn't have a whole lot of supply because he was also in ones to watch. Yeah. So his gold card was already out of pack is there, and he's he's an expensive card, so EA doesn't put a ton of them on the market. So on yesterday morning, on Wednesday morning, I went and bought him at like 220 to 230K, uh, the market was pretty quiet, and I'm like, okay, this card's going to go up out of packs because his inform should easily be 400k plus on day one. And mm-hmm. what happened, guys, and this was crazy, is yesterday, guys, the inform pack weight for all this current team of the week was incredibly high. For reference, this Werner was packed 300 times in like two and a half hours. 300 of them were on the market, so... His price came down literally this morning all the way to 300k, which is crazy because his gold was just 250. <laughs> you know, it was even higher than that. It was just 270 recently. Yeah. So yeah. him coming down in price really reduced the price of his gold card to the point where this card, his gold last night got down to as low as 185,000 coins, which Whoa. is crazy. So he had a massive rise today. So I invested in him at the wrong time. I still have some um, that I'm going to sell off, and now will probably be closer to break even than anything. But yeah. if I didn't make those investments, there were such better moves to make that it, it ended up costing me a lot of coins, and we call that opportunity cost. It's kind of like when your t- coins are tied up in something. Yeah, um, exactly. I also was heavily debating on that Florenzi, um, what he would be worth. Just has his card. It's really good. Um, he's a pretty hype name in FIFA, so I thought he could be worth more than thirty k at least that first day. So I had invest reinvested in him the morning of Team of the Week for around thirty k. Uh, about ten minutes into Team of the Week coming out, I noticed that his Team of the Week was getting supplied like crazy and that he wasn't really rising. So I sold some of them for right around break even or like a really small loss, and then a couple of them I didn't get out of in time. So I had to sell at like a ten or fifteen k loss closer to so i probably lost in total like 100k on him after i made it like a million (laughs) yeah um yeah him and werner were really bad fails on my part um and that just shows the market's kind of unpredictable you would think an out of pack card like werner would do really well and i was really confident that as almost a safe investment but because this inform got packed so crazy people just thought guys they just think, oh, I'll just pay at that point like 60, 70K more for the inform. I know I would. So that's what brought down his gold card. And yeah, it was just a, it just didn't work out because this became so cheap. So maybe I should call this uh, this uh, show How to Lose Coins this week. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm the I, expert I, on it. I have a, I have a story. Regard- yeah. So, okay, I lost coins on Rodrigo. That was fine by me. It wasn't a problem. Yeah. Uh, but next uh, my next move was to buy into some manchester united players mm-hmm. for the uh, champions league marquee matchups mm-hmm. and what happened guys is that the marquee matchups for champions league sh- uh, came out mm-hmm. but people couldn't complete the sbc because uh, they required uh, champions league cards which were not on the market until the the sbc came out 
Yeah. So they were like very pricey. They were like yep. 10k uh, a extinct. car. Mm -hmm. Or extinct. So um, yeah, I had like a look show. I had him like uh, I don't know, like 40 of them, um, and didn't didn't manage to make any coins on that because yep. I people couldn't complete the SBC right away. Yeah, it's really unfortunate because EA is doing some things where investing is becoming really hard. So, you know, it's good and bad. And I always say if EA is like, people say they're trying to screw traders and I don't really believe that because... If no, EA, no. No, yeah. and if EA does one thing, it's like to help the public. So, for example, let me give you an example. If Ajax and Liverpool require two players from each club, they have such little like SBC fodder cards in their club that these could easily go like 5 to 10k and that's not fun for a casual player because that means if they didn't invest that they're going to have to pay a ton for this SBC. So they only required um, one from each which isn't that much and then yeah. they required two from PSG and Manchester but both of them have a lot of cards under 2k so it was hard to see a rise you would have still seen a natural rise, like Florian said, if a mass amount of people could have completed this at once. But because the UCL rares have been dwindling on the market, it was only getting completed like a handful at a time, so it didn't feel like that huge, excuse me, rush of buying. So yeah, it kind of screwed people that invested because normally they would even see a profit from that, but they couldn't because people couldn't do the SBC. And who knows what EA does intentionally and unintentionally, but that was a pretty severe error because they released these cards on the market legitimately 10 minutes before they asked for them to be used. So yeah, it didn't work out good. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was like, a, let's say, a mistake from EA. I don't think they, they wanted to do this. I don't think so. Um, going now, let's say, to, to our thumbnail uh, title which is Thursday flips. Um, so today was a big day for the market. I, I've seen uh, your tweets, uh, Jake, mm -hmm. <laughs> regarding traders uh, bragging themselves on uh, making coins <laughs> today. It was basically easy for anybody to be a trader today. They, you just needed to have some cards bought uh, last night or yesterday or this morning. So yeah. everything uh, was up in price. What would you advise for, so what happened today and what would, would you advise for, let's say, maybe next week, for next Thursday? For sure. So it, it, you might have seen that tweet, guys. It, it got a lot of attention on Twitter. Um, I just want to reference, too, I, I like when people are making coins. I actually said it a few days ago where no one likes a dead market. And even like casual players don't like seeing that their Richarlison is down 30K or that their Ben yeah. Yedder is down 25K or, you know, people don't want to buy a player and live in fear right that they're going to lose that many coins that they work so hard for so yeah. no one really likes when a market is crashing i mean sure it can player prices can be cheap that's one thing but if a market is crashing from a few days ago and you bought a team you're going to be frustrated with that so no one likes a dead market everyone likes a market where they can make coins so today was a good day I just didn't like that a lot of people like suddenly appeared like, hey, look at all these profits we're making when the last five days have been horrible for traders and <laughs> everyone knows that and I've yeah. made some losses. I know a lot of people have and it just happens with trading and it's sometimes worth the risk to do that and eventually you make a lot more than you lose and I think I have around like seven or eight million coins liquid right now. Um but I've also lost a ton of coins this year, guys, like probably 500 to 750 K now, like no problem. <laughs> and yeah, that's just cause I'm, I'm willing to try things and not everything I try works. Um, so like Florian said, the market went up really, really well today. And what you saw was it rising for a few reasons. You saw it rise because no one was invested. The whole market was really dead. Like we we're talking about, right? It dropped every single day, pretty much from Sunday. So there wasn't a whole lot of buyers. Um, people were really scared to invest because the market's been crazy and they've lost a lot of coins recently. People were scared to buy their teams. But then what happened was we got this double rewards injection from Rivals and Weekend League rewards and people suddenly got hundreds of thousands of coins into their account and they said, okay, I don't care. I'm buying now. I got to play Weekend League or I got to play Rivals this afternoon. And they just started buying like crazy. And it's easy, easy, easy to see on the market. I'll pull up a graph here just for some perspective. This is Martial, really meta, really loved in FIFA, super well known. And I'm going to pull up his hourly, which will be from today, of course. 
Yeah, guys. So uh, if you you can listen to this podcast on uh, Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts, but don't forget you can see also the YouTube video. And uh, here uh, Jake is showing on the screen exactly what we are talking about. So maybe maybe for more context, you can also see the video. Yeah. So this morning, right at rewards, he was around 117k. And my advice. Uh, in my trading group was that they could buy during the first hour. I thought they might see a slight dip. It's a good time to snipe during those rivals rewards period. That's not a, the huge inflation of coins because usually people list things for an hour and they it takes a while for them to get bought up, yeah. right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it takes a while for those coins, coins to actually come into your account. So as they start coming into their account, Martial Rose, next hour was 131, next hour 153, next hour 161, and he peaked at like literally 165 to 170. Um, and a question, question here, uh, yeah. uh, Jake, because I think a lot of people are interested in this. Mm -hmm. When do you know? So let's say you you did this, you you bought early. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you know when to sell? It's a fantastic question and a really tough one. So you see a really big initial wave, which is what you're seeing on this graph, and it's going to be really consistent with most players for like three or four hours post, because that's when a lot of people are online and that get, they get that immediate rush of opening their rewards. Um, and those are just the people that have opened them themselves. And then you kind of see a, a lower period where there's just some more supply than buyers. Um, and then like at 3 p.m. UK or 4 p.m. even, you see it pick back up a little bit because that's when school is out for the UK and kids are coming home from school and then looking to buy their team. So you kind of see that same pattern. It can generally be highest three or four hours before. I think some cards might even go beyond their peak later today because we didn't get a whole lot of supply from our key matchups. And I don't mm -hmm. think people are really scared of their promo. So I wouldn't be surprised if like a card like Martial goes back to 165 tonight. Just... Uh, uh, another question. Are cards uh, going even higher tomorrow? That's a really tough one. And I think that's really dependent on the team. Um, right? If there's a few good Prem strikers in that have big upgrades... I don't foresee Martial having a great day. But if yeah. the players are outrageously expensive, they're super meta, they're in off leagues, I could see him going up further. Because there'll probably be some at least promo packs or something available in store for those FIFA point spenders. And I, so the market should naturally inflate. It's just a matter of how much and which cards based off their promotion team, which we really don't know too much about yet. So, yeah, selling guys, selling... To answer that question selling in the first few hours is great um or sometimes you can even wait beyond 6 p.m content like today like i said i think it will go higher we got marquee matchups the packs weren't great from that so there's not going to be a whole lot of extra supply and there's still going to be a lot of people buying to play weekend league and rivals today uh that's that's very good jake and and maybe linking to to what's gonna happen tomorrow because we already have seen so yesterday we've seen a screen with uh, some letters missing from the screen mm -hmm. and today uh, and during during yesterday and to, today we heard that it's called rule breakers and yeah. now we saw the screen and there's a card there with someone from napoli who's a center forward yep. a lot of speculation about what rule breakers mean and maybe it's connected to something they did in the past or something re related to, to the Scream, like some uh, Scream promo in the past, like when some stats are boosted. Yep. Uh, first of all, what's your opinion on, about that? I will tell you also what I think. And after that, what can it do for the market? Are you asking me what I think of Rule Breakers is? Yeah, yeah. Like, what's your, your hunch? Oh, like, man, what? I wish I knew. The only one on the cover. Not, not like like your your guess, not yeah. like the real thing. Yeah. So my guess off initial thoughts, I know people are playing detective on the loading screen. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. EA drops hints and I'm not sure yeah. if there's anything new when we're recording this. But from what I saw, there was a center forward from Napoli. And to me, that screams Mertens, obviously. And what I could see from it, guys, is that a lot of people had ruled out Mertens because I believe one of the stats was already lower. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if lower or the same. Maybe yeah, the same. okay, yeah, maybe the same. And my opinion at first was that maybe they break the rules by lowering a stat or keeping a stat the same, but upping other stats pretty significantly. So I still thought it could be Mertens at first, but I thought they might mess this promo, mess with this promo where they knock a stat down and increase another stat like a lot. So um, in that example, Mertens pace and shooting might be up but his dribbling might be down or something 
And maybe that's what breaks the rules that we've always had for the game. I don't know. I don't know if it's a rule-breaking thing from FIFA or in real life. I don't know how they would tie that in as much. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't have any idea. And that's just what I was speculating is that maybe they modify a stat down, but other stats go up. What about you? Yeah, I, I've seen all the scenarios on Twitter. I, I've checked before we we started the recording. So we're recording on a Thursday evening after the 6 p.m. Yep. UK content. Yep. So I've seen people saying it's Lozano because he broke the rules when he beat Mexico, beat Germany a yep. couple of years ago. Some people are saying it's exactly what you said, Mertens. I've seen someone even say it's Manolas because he doesn't have shooting or dribbling. So they boosted his card. So I, I, I don't yep. know what to say. What I know is that probably we expect something really crazy and a lot of hype. Yep. Uh, because once to watch promo was kind of expected. So people kind of expected the cards. Now is the time for EA to boost a little bit the, the sales of... Uh, the sales of FIFA points exactly and uh, they probably will put some really hyped players in uh, in this promo tomorrow and related to too. this related to this what can we expect tomorrow in terms of market and let's say maybe we get a team early or we get a team at uh, at 6 p.m mm -hmm. what uh, what should uh, people who would uh, want to buy some things over there uh, should look at yeah i think that like I said, the market's going to be really dependent on what what this, what's in the team, right? Like, yeah, and what yeah. features. And there are some ca cards, guys, that are really naturally inflated because they are some of the limited options in that league. So if it changes that, just know it can really change the market. So let me give you a good example here. I'm actually scrolling to look for it. Um, but there's not a whole lot of center backs in the Premier League this year, right? So yeah. this Ake card isn't outstanding i wouldn't think anyone looks at this card and says oh that's it you know i really want to use him it's okay i yeah. mean i've seen a yeah. lot of cards that are similar statistically that are like 5k or 2k <laughs> or less but ake is holding a value of 19k on ps and that he actually had a really amazing rise today too i'll show you quickly 12k to 19 20k pretty much doubling in price nearly right so the reason that he's still holding a value isn't because he's amazing. No one would say he is. It's because he's one of the few center backs in the Premier League, and the top few cost so much that this is like the next best option because it's Van Dijk, Gomez, and then maybe Dobbins and Sanchez, then Ake. So, and you need two of them in your team. Yeah. So that's why he's holding his price so well. But if we get a couple or even one Premier League center back that's really in demand, it's going to affect those three, right? Because there's so few options. Um, and that's why it's so hard to tell preemptively. Typically with promotions, you see, especially if the team is leaked or if EA is dropping more and more hints or clues or loading screens, you see some panic leading into it just because people are so nervous about losing coins that they end up selling preemptively just in case. So what, 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 should, we, what should we do? tomorrow like do we stay with the coins with what we have do we buy something when mm -hmm. we see the team what do we do for me what i'll be looking for guys is out of pack stuff uh that is down in price like if it's down for no reason so i think of like a player like gold rashford he's literally like the fourth most popular player right now in this game he searched a ton he's bought a ton and he's not in packs because he has a team of the week and that's three times more in position change. So this gold should still stay valued really well. So if this card drops like under 200k, I'd become very interested because that would just show that there's panic. Uh, same thing with gold Werner again. Um, other cards include old informs or ones to watch. So if we go to like a team of the week and we go to team of the week two, team of the week two is pretty darn good. So that's what I'll look at here. If, okay. if team of the week two players start suddenly dropping in price just because people are scared like this maximin who was 270k today or this hernandez goes to 100k i would feel really comfortable buying them because they're not going to get supplied same with sanchez he's almost extinct pros are loving him um yeah he should hold a good value so if those players start coming down i'll buy them i think that's really safe I'm probably going to hold on the golds until I see what kind of supply we get and I want, once I see the promotion that we get. So I'll probably look for these out-of-pack players um, or maybe look at meta golds if they drop a lot, but I'll probably try to stay liquid into the promotion. I do like to try to trade new promo cards a lot too. So that's what I'll be going into it with. 
that's that's very good jake uh so guys for today our time is almost up mm-hmm. uh i think we covered a lot of things what okay. happened last week what uh, what are the moves for thursday flips let's say mm-hmm. Uh, if we have a similar situation next week mm-hmm. uh, we have this new promo check out uh, check out twitter check out uh, jake's instagram also he's putting there a lot of content so uh, you might see some insights there i know you are also doing q and a's from time to time yep. so mm-hmm. that's always a good place to be also leave a comment in the comment section guys if you if you have let's say a more uh, focused uh, niche question yeah please uh, for now for yeah, yeah. say yeah yeah, no, yeah, please leave comments, guys. Um, I know f- for me, maybe it's the same for Florian, but I can be most responsive on my smaller platforms. Like, I have too many usually to keep up with on Twitter and Instagram. But if you comment on YouTube, I do try to get back to you guys because I really appreciate you taking that time to to listen to us. And we try to put out valuable information. So if you're willing to watch and comment, we'll do our best to answer. Yeah, thanks a lot also for the support, guys. Lately, I've seen you, you yeah. are here yeah. uh, watching us, listening to us. We are trying to cover everything. Your comments help us to understand what to cover more for exactly. the next episodes. And we are here every week. Don't forget that. Also, you can take us with us with you uh, on your audio mobile if you have like Apple, mm-hmm. Google Podcast or Spotify. So uh, that should be it for today. Yep. Stay safe, guys, with all what's happening in the world. And uh, don't forget to um, to contact us if something. Yeah, for sure. Stay safe, guys. Thank you.